Hi everyone. Today we're going to assemble a Roxton side loader. I'm going to show you the ins and outs, maybe show you a couple of tips here. And uh, as you can see, I have my tools ready, a pair of wire strippers, number one, number two, Phillips. And these are drivers for my gun that I have over here. We're going to use that. I got a small 16th inch drill bit and a 16th inch Allen wrench and a clamp. You don't have to use any of this stuff. However, you'll need a minimum of two screwdrivers and probably a drill bit. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is take the main body apart, which is this piece. So you can see it's got some nuts on the back. Take these screws off. This is our 1032 machine nuts and bolts. You can see we're getting into this thing already. This is your diverter. We're going to loosen that screw right here. We're going to actually take this completely out. That's the first thing we're going to do. We want to get that out of the way for several reasons. One of them is it'll be in the way of this motor mount screw. These four motor mount screws here. See this? It's going to go right on here. There's nothing to worry about centering the motor. It's already been figured out. It's in the right place. It's been tested already. There's been a motor in your loader before you got it to make sure it works. All we have to do is screw it in. So I'm going to put a screw all the way through and try to line this first hole up. Go, we missed it. There we go. Put that in kind of loose at first. Now that I got two of them in, pretty much drive them home. And even though this sh shaft is not centered in this hole, pay no attention to that. It had nothing to do with the operation. It's just a clearance hole for the sprocket hub. Now this I'm putting in by hand, you notice I'm not using my gun. I don't want to strip anything. I want to be sure I have everything tight. I'm looking to make sure that the motor is seated against the back of the plywood in all four corners. Okay, so now I'm going to put the sprocket on. Now you can see there's a set screw that goes on the flat part here. Now, one thing you don't ever want to do is turn this shaft if it's in an uncomfortable position. Like if this flat was facing over here, you cannot turn this shaft. This is a gear motor that is a right angled gear motor and it has a worm gear in it. And those only work in one direction from the worm to the gear, not from the gear to the worm. You can't turn this motor by turning it, you'll just break something. So, if you need to turn it, all you have to do is get a battery and turn it, and I'm going to be right back for one.
Now this is a 12 volt motor, but it's a DC motor. With a DC motor, you can see this thing turning. One and a half volts will turn this at rate X. Three volts will turn it at rate X times two. So you see it's moving very slowly now, but it's moving fast enough to where it could turn this thing in a position to put it near the bottom here. Now here's the thing that you have to align and you want to take notice of. And what that is, is the diverter. Now initially in the instructions, I said to put this to the top of the shaft. But what happened is this material is changing over time as I'm buying it. This 3 8 plywood, it's not really 3 8 so it needs to come down. I'm exposing quite a bit of this shaft in order to get the gear in the center of the diverter, which is more important. You don't want that thing rubbing against anything. So I think it's going to be right about here. I'm going to tighten that up. And once again, I can use my battery and I'm going to look at the overall clearance. There may, this, this plastic, this Delrin is not extremely flat, so there's going to be some fluctuation in it. But as long as this stays relatively in the center of the diverter, as viewed edge on like I'm looking at it, you're gonna be fine. And everything looks good here. And I talked about Loctite on this. I've really never had a problem. I don't think Loctite's necessary on that set screw as, as the uh, instructions claim. I'm gonna put this one in. This other screw that I took out. We're just going to snug this up. Make sure both of these are pretty snug, but not overly tight. And there you have it. Okay, so now we're ready One thing I'm going to do is make sure this is a little straighter. Loosen both of these again. square here. And that looks beautiful right there. Now if it was off a little bit it's not going to matter but you want to get it as close to possible as close as possible. So I'm, I'm happy with this. See, this obviously goes here. This angle on the bottom tells you that. And now I have this ready to go. Put the screws back. this 3 8 3 8 nuts driver tighten that bad boy up Now you might wonder why the 
screws go into this wood fairly tightly, well that aligns everything. Now I'm confident that this is almost a working device here at this point. I'm going to take a couple of Pachico balls. Throw them in there. Red to positive. See, the clearances are good. The balls are going to end up falling in there. And they come up the top. Okay, so obviously we can't easily put a tube on there yet. So that's what we have this for. The output block comes with three screws. It used to come with two. I've added one. And they're a little bit more aggressive. So for that we're going to use screw mill. We're going to use number one. this block up flush to three edges, it's going to be in the right position. Check. It looks like it's pretty well centered. Doesn't have to be perfect, it has to be close. Let's put this bottom block on. What we're going to do is bring these screws out just a hair with points sticking out, like so. And line it up on the holes. Okay, and I'm going to use back hopper piece here and hold it like so. Keep everything nice, flat, boom, boom. Okay, now we've got a nice flat surface here. The base is going to mount to that. Okay, so we're moving right along here. The next thing we're going to do is set this aside. and work on this hopper bottom. Show you what's been changed from the instructions. Here's our nuts and bolts for that. Find eight of each. And four little tiny washers. Grab those first. Those go into the center two rails here. And lift these rails up just ever so slightly to make sure that we make total contact to the ball when it's running down these rails. Just push those screws through. Now you notice on these rails, one side is chamfered for the screw head. 
Okay, so those two. Now we're just going to loosely put these on by hand. We're going to get some wires under there in the next step. Our two sides and they're sitting up on top of these shims to create a little angle for the balls to roll into this slot here and likewise for this one so we don't get balls stuck on the edge It all makes sense once we put this together. A little trouble starting this once I'm gonna drive it in. There we go. of these screws in here. Okay. There you go. Now, you see a hole in this side here. This side's going to go up against here. Now this is the front that's going to go towards your machine. It's going to be sloped up straight up in the air even as this is tilted to get in a maximum, you know, we're gonna get the maximum out of this thing as far as it's reach to the inside of your machine this way. Okay, so now we're gonna connect the wire. Pretty easy if you have the right tools. This is a great stripper. You want about four inches or more. A little bit more is not gonna hurt you. Right. And this has a shield on it. This has a ground wire in it that we don't need. So I'm going to cut that off of there, along with that fiberglass reinforcement we don't need. And this is what we're at. We got two wires here. We haven't damaged them at all, which is nice. So at about, say, three quarters of an inch or so. We're going to expose the wire. We're going to expose about three eighths of an inch of it on each wire. Just like that. And the other thing we're going to do is cut this off a little bit because it's probably hollow. And do these two. Okay. Twist these up a little bit. Okay. So the side with the hole in it is the side we're going to concentrate on. And we're going to come in like so. All we need to do. We're going to use a 5 16th, I believe, nut driver. Loop this or black one here. Doesn't matter, red, black on the first one. 
hold that from spinning. See? Boom. Come over here. You always want to go in the direction that you're tightening, tightening so you don't lose it. Okay. You're just going to snug that up a little bit. Come over here. Tighten. So we have opposite you know, space between. These two are black wires now. Come over here. Snug that up. Tighten. You don't have to go crazy over it and tighten it too hard. It's not going anywhere. That's the wrong nut driver. There. This is what you're left with. What's happening here is that adjacent rails now will complete the circuit when a ball touches. So this is a switch. These two wires on this end will complete when anything happens like this, when any of our balls anywhere here. That's why we got these things sloping to get the ball over into the center. Okay, next we'll put on the sides. Okay, now, like I said, the hole here is for the front, which is going up against here. So the side, this needs to be flush on that edge. This hangs over here going to go on like this. So let's put them both on here and then use our clamp. Just to snug it up a little bit and then I'll be able to move these around get them exactly where I want them. We're using this block to Flush that up nice, nice. Perfect. Now I'm going to tighten this up. Okay. But we have to put this together. Are these three quarter number four wood screws? And you need to drill this. It will split out the plywood if you don't. So I have this all set up. It's a matter of eyeballing your drill straight into the plywood. stripped it. You got to put more pressure than that on the head. And the other thing you can do is just do this by hand. Maintain your pressure. 
I've included extra screws just in case that happens. Okay. Alright, now let's put the back piece on. Flush the top up. And these back sides. I'm going to press it up against there. Let's see if our clamp's going to be in the way. I don't think so. drive these screws with the low setting on your drill. Already then. Here's where we are currently. We're actually ready to put that screw in to hold this hopper to the main body. What I'm going to do, there's other ways to do this as shown in the instructions, but I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Do a center on each side of the block, the bottom support. So make sure I got this thing in the center, pretty close. And come down here with this drill extension. Don't forget to pick up the screw so you don't ruin your floor and your kitchen. Oh, that's going there nice. Now this screw here, holding the hopper to the main body, it needs to go in deep enough. It's pre-drilled in the bottom so it doesn't short out the two rails. Otherwise, you're thinking your machine's going to be on the whole time. So I want to make sure that's in there deep enough. And there you have it. Okay, before I go any further, I forgot to tighten these. I'm going to tighten these other four screws here. And these don't need any lock washers or any lock tight or anything like that. They 
are going up against the wood, you'll find that they'll snug up really nice. Just make sure everything's good here. Just. What I'm doing is turning the screwdriver. That way I won't rip the wire up. I'm looking at how much screw is is sticking through the nut. That'll tell me how tight I have it. So it looks pretty good. Naturally, these ones on the side are going to be a little bit less showing there on the end of the screw because they got to go through the angle. All right. This is looking pretty darn good. What we need to do is put the guard, combination guard, and it holds the top of the hopper in place. We take these screws out of here. Watch the orientation here of the space where you can see. It's about right there, see? These are all gonna line up. If I have it like this, that's wrong. I'm gonna lay that down the way I want it. I'm gonna take this. Put this in the position I want it. I'm gonna use my clamp here. Snug this up, get this perfect, see? We'll line that up nice. Now I have to mark these two holes. Well, my pencil's a little bit long. We'll see if we can do it with it. I think that's working. I'm making a circular motion here so I get the entire thing, the entire inside of that hole. I should have done it. So now what we'll do is we'll make this easy by removing the screw. As I'm looking at this, I can see where the marks were, like this, the top of that arc. I didn't mark it all the way, but I'm drawing that in. I'm going to try to hit the center of that. Here you obviously don't want to go in too far and put a hole in the sprocket. Come in about a quarter of an inch. Get those started. I'm gonna put, these, put this back together. The screw sticking out just slightly again, just like I did the bottom one. There we go. I'm going to back it out because you see I got a big space here. And then I'm going to put it in. You don't want to strip that out. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. That is nice. 
Now what we're going to do, check that it fit. We're going to take these off. Let's take our smaller Phillips. Find that hole that we made earlier. Now we have our top lock, and we can drill this out. I think this is a 332nd drill bit. I'm going to angle it in just, you know what, before I do that. Is this big enough? No, it isn't. Okay, so this clamp isn't big enough. If I had a slightly longer clamp, I might clamp this together. So. I can't squeeze it together. And the other thing that's going to help me draw this together is angling the screw slightly. I don't want to hit this other screw here. I'm going to go a little higher on this. There's one. Sink I have. Your level of sophistication in putting this to together is going to be determined by what kind of tools you have. It's already at both sides. Nice and flush. She some of these screws are not very good, I just noticed. Cut a little bit off of the bottom of this piece or something, and it does. It's all good. I'm a little bit lower, but this opening here, <clears throat> while it may direct some of the balls through there, is so you can't get your fingers in there. A normal person, because I don't want anybody doing that. This motor will hurt you. This has about 50 pounds of torque at the end of that gear. And what we're going to do. If I remember correctly, we're going to come off of this side. We're going to put our strain relief on. I had a hard time finding a decent strain relief that would work on this wire, so I made my own. If you're wondering where I got this silly thing. Yeah. <laughs> 
I have a slightly smaller drill bit here, it's like this 16th. So what I'll do is we want it somewhere in this general area. I'm going to put one hole in there. And I'm going to line it up and put the other hole in. These are a little bit small, they're a little tricky to work with. I got them threaded. Should be a little bit easier. This is not magnetic. How about this? Now, this is even chamfered, so note that. Chamfered for the screw. Okay, we just snug this up until that wire doesn't move. So pulling on this wire won't affect it anymore. You can see we got plenty of wire here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the, the power supply that uh, I recommend. It's 12 volts. It's got, uh, I think, three amps on it. Is it a it doesn't say, but at any rate, we're only drawing about a third of an amp when it's running properly. And uh, what it does have is overprotection. If this thing draws a little bit more than an amp, I think, it's probably one amp. Yeah, it says on it, one amp, 12 volts at one amp. So. This normally draws a third of an amp. If it starts drawing more than one amp, if it gets bogged down or something, or something, there could be a number of things besides a jam that'll stop balls from flowing. It could happen in your tubing, or uh, something could get in there, a screw could get in there or something. At any rate, it'll shut down. A red light will come on, and you won't harm your motor or anything. Uh, so that's a good thing. It's got protection on it, and it's inexpensive. It comes with this plug, so, you know, you can buy a couple of these and move this thing around and have them ready to go. And they can come on when your machine's power strip comes on. So what I'm going to do is take this drill bit here and drill a tiny hole right in between this, and I'm not even going to use a drill press. I'm going to do it right here. Right here on the table. I'll use this. I'd rather wreck this than the table. I'm eyeballing right in the center of that. And I did it. It's not hard. Now I'm going to drill it a little bit larger. And my, I just ran out of juice. So I'll be right back. Here we go. Okay. Now it's just following the old hole. Okay, right in the center. Nice. Okay, and this is where our little clip's going to come in.
And what you want to do is locate this on center with this bolt. So if you want, you could make a little line. Put it on there. Start a hole. As long as you didn't go off center with your hole through this plug, I guarantee you it'll be fine. Now, if you don't want to do this part and go drill through that, that's your prerogative, but your plug's going to move around with just this holding it. Now, here you got to be careful. I'm just touching that just so I can get the screw started and let it dig into the wood. And it's a smaller screw because this is right near the other side of this plywood is the path of the balls. So I don't want to have a screw sticking in through that for sure. So I'm going to put this on. There's some thickness with the plug. So that's it. See, that's perfect. That thing's on there tight like a drum. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is wire this bad boy up. Now let me see if I can slip this in here. Because I may have to loosen this. And I do. I'm just going to loosen this screw. And making sure I got... The closing end in the right position, which is down. See, I'm going to slip this through here. Tighten this up a bit. And then what we're going to do is make a loop. Okay, we're not going to close it all the way. What we want to do is get this wire in from this side. We're going to leave a little bit of slack here. And then we're going to take these motor wires and come through from the other direction. We'll get on the same front side of the, the larger wire. Once again, I don't want to pull too tight on the, I'm going to leave a little bit of slack there. And then I'm going to snug this up. There we go. Now then, if we go right to the top here, that's going to be enough wire for us. Just about to the top. I'll go just a hair longer. Now cut this. So you can see you had one more try. If you screwed up your wires, let's say you tried to strip this and and you you know you cut too deep or something went wrong, you know, you have one more try at least. And it's wire. You could buy wire. I got this particular wire at Home Depot. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take the positive from the motor. I'm going to fold it over on itself to get just a little bit more meat underneath in this connector here.
The positive side is on the right. So I'm loosening this. You know what? I'm going to go get my tiny little screwdriver. One of the smaller screwdrivers are working. One of those watch screwdrivers. Okay. You can see that the contacts open up. And this you want nice and snug in there. So that goes like that. Now we will strip this. I'm going to take the black wire. Twist it up. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to bend it in a little loop like that. It gives it a little bit more meat. You don't want to squeeze it down on the insulation. You want to squeeze it down on the wire itself. Clamp down on that wire. Just like that. Now we just got two wires left. So effectively, We've put the switch in between the motor and the plug. Put it like that. If you've got a soldering iron, you can use it. If not, you could twist it up really good. Or well, we got to use an adverb. That's all there is to that. Okay, I found my piece of shrink wrap. I'm just going to put it over the connection. And my lighter. Keep that up. I'll keep it in one spot too long. And that should work. I'm going to tidy this up with the other zip tie that's supplied. Put it in right about here. Now we can trim these off. And there you have it, everything but the base here, which is what we're going to do next. Okay, so where I put the base, this may vary according to what your setup is like, is I try to make this surface come out about flush with this. I'm going to line this up, mark it, and then take a square. We got way too much lead sticking out of here.
the better surface. I'm going to keep that visible. Line this up. Will my clamp clamp this? Because if it will. Line that line up and get the sides right. Right there. Okay. Let's get set up with the right drill bit. This will really work. I don't even have to measure anything because I can see where I want to put this. What I want to do is I want to go into this plywood. So I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one in the center of this big three quarter inch block. over here on this side so we have three screws on this what we're going to have to do is countersink them we don't want it wobbly on the head so we just countersink and you could use a drill bit a larger drill bit for this, you have to be careful. You didn't dig all the way through it. And I don't care if I go a little deeper than I need to be. Take a look here. See, it's nice and stable. The spaces here, you could put a piece of leather down to perhaps halfway or so that went down in there and came around. You could fasten it here, possibly with a couple of small screws. And what that would do is make it a little quieter when the balls are coming down. That's up to you. They don't need, these rails don't need to be out this far. If they were that long, this thing would work fine. But the problem would be then, I, you'd have to go over them. If, they, if I ended them there, there'd be a problem, obviously. So that's why it's all the way, just for a smooth transition. Uh, we talk about safety. Keep your fingers out of there. Don't let a child anywhere near this thing because a child could get a small hand in there want to feel the magic of what's making the balls go up 
and uh, consequently lose a finger. So you need to keep it out of the reach of children. So let's take our power supply, plug it in, get that wire out of the way, it should go over the top of this, okay, and I got a cord down here, and if we did our work correctly, we should be able to hold the ball right here and this baby should be going and I can already see through the hole that the direction is correct so we know this is going to work I got a short piece of hose hooked up and I'm going to drop some balls in here See, and the nice thing is, this will keep up with your machine. You don't want to fill the hopper up. You want the ball to fall in there, you want them to come out. Now, I could probably throw all these balls in here and not have a problem. That's not enough to cause an issue. However, to the stop. <clears throat> However, if I fill this thing up solidly with balls, it probably will jam, and that's because balls like to nest, you know. It's just in their geometry, and they almost turn into a solid in there, and the agitation can't occur because it's almost like you got a piece of metal pushing against the whole device, and that's not good. You want this thing to be able to breathe. So you let it keep up with the throw of balls, and it'll work flawlessly. If you want to hook up multiple machines to one of these, you would need to extend this out further and make sure that you don't have all the weight of the balls pushing down right here near this end you'd have to probably lower the i haven't done it myself yet but it would be an extension on here and they'd only be one layer thick and that it could handle it's just when it welds up this way that the weight and the pressure becomes too great against the sprocket and there you have it the roxton side loader there we go want to empty it just hold a ball right here That's the end. Nothing else in there. Of course, your tubing, if you take a look at this, is going to lead up to your prize hopper. So there's the original side loader down there. It's still working strong. It was built over a year ago now, I believe. And uh, I have it hooked up to this machine. It works great. Um, it's a little wider than the pro than the, uh, the device I'm selling now because it doesn't need to be that wide. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned something about the Roxas side loader.